Representative Fred Crespo, thanks for joining us. It's uh, May the 31st. Ostensibly, we should be done, but we're not really done, even though for now the, the House just uh, went out of session. Uh, what are your thoughts at this point? Let, let me ask you something. What do you think at this point where we should be done was the major accomplishment that you might cite that came out of this session, and, and what are the disappointments you have? Well, in terms of accomplishment, I mean, we did pass legislation on both House and Senate. Uh, the biggest issue coming in for me and for many of my colleagues uh, was the budget. And it has been an issue the last several years. Uh, I was truly hoping that with a, a new administration in the governor's office that uh, we were going to work together on this budget. Uh, I'm kind of uh, taken aback that we weren't able to do that. Uh, we did pass a spending plan on the House and the Senate. Uh, the governor, through uh, Leader Durkin, did file a bill which was his spending bill, and they have two things in common, a couple of things in common. Number one, perhaps most importantly, they're bo both short close to $3 billion. So when you say both, you mean? The governor's introduced bill, a spending bill that was introduced by Leader Durkin, is short a little bit over $3 billion as well. So I know we've been criticized a lot for putting something out there. Uh, I think we look at this more as moving the process forward. We need to put, make sure something's out there in queue, yes, in case. Uh, but our bill represents the needs of our districts, the needs of, our, of this state, whereas Governor Rauner's spending plan, uh, again, aside from being uh, in, in the red $3 billion, does have some severe cuts that I don't think anyone can agree to. Not only Democrats, but I can tell you this, just talking to my colleagues on the Republican side, they don't feel very comfortable with some of those cuts as well. Uh, and that's what I think uh, Senator Cullerton was saying, that some of the Republicans didn't want some of those votes to come up because they didn't want to be taking some of those. They didn't want to have to vote for, for some of those cuts that were being proposed. Uh, and you already answered really the question I was going to say. People would say, how could the Democratic, uh, Democrats in the legislature pass a budget that was $4 billion out of balance? As you mentioned, the governor budget was also out of balance because he was counting about $2 billion in pension savings that were, were not, everyone knew, were not going to be there. On the other hand, what would you say uh, to those that say, well, why can't you guys just pass a budget? Why can't you pass a budget that's balanced? What's, what's the problem with saying, here's how much revenue we have and we're going to spend uh, no more than that? I think if you look at the budget or the spending plan that was introduced by the Democrats, if you look at the budget that's been proposed uh, by Governor Rauner and introduced by uh, Leader Durkin, they, they both, I think, just by looking at both of those budgets, uh, admit the fact that the needs are greater than the current revenues. And uh, can we cut some more? I, perhaps we can, but I think we need to make these cuts collectively. We, both parties have to do this together. But you need to start the process. And you have to have that intestinal fortitude at some point, pull the trigger, make some of these calls. We did that on our side. It wasn't easy. And we're coming back Thursday. So as the uh, speaker said today, we're not done. And we, we, we understand that. Uh, but, but you, we have to make decisions together. And I think, again, talking behind the scenes with my colleagues on the Republican side, they have a heart, they have a soul. Some of these cuts they don't agree with and they don't want to make those cuts either. So it has to be a balanced approach. Now, uh, there's obviously a revenue stream issue that needs to be discussed. What shape or form does that take? I don't know. I mean, for many of us, myself included, I've never voted for a tax increase, even when I was a trustee in my whole hometown of Hoffman Estates. But just looking at the needs of the state, looking at what other states around us do in terms of how they generate revenue, uh, I think we need to, to have that discussion. And for some reason, we're not. Uh, the speaker has mentioned this as well, that Governor Rauner does have his turnaround agenda. And let me tell you personally, there's some things there that I think I can work with them, and I think we need to address. Now, does it have to be tied into the budget? There, that's where we disagree. But I think it's a long-term discussion, and I think for anyone, especially the governor, to think that we can, he can will his way in, in, in five or six months, government doesn't work that way. By design, it moves very slowly, incrementally, 
But I think some of those issues that he's talked about is something that we can have a, a, a good discussion and perhaps reach some kind of solution or something that will satisfy him. I believe Speaker Madigan said today that he was willing to compromise with the governor uh, as long as the governor was reasonable, whatever that means, mm -hmm. right? But we're also told that the governor is about to launch an ad campaign that I'm not quite sure because I haven't seen it, who it's directed to, if it's going to be attacking Madig Speaker Madigan and President Cullerton or, or all of the Democrats or, or just what that's going to do. Are you concerned that that approach, which he, we have not seen here in the past, might that so poison the relationship between the governor's office and the legislature that it would make compromise even more difficult? I can only speak on behalf of myself. I, I mean, some of the things that, for example, the supplemental bill that we voted on uh, that the governor wanted, uh, I was one of the few Democrats who supported that bill. Uh, and I just want to make sure he understands that some of us are willing to sit down and work with them for the welfare and the betterment of, our, of the state. But I can tell you this as well as, as, as any human being, if I'm attacked, if I'm home and, and I'm going to start my campaign season starting tomorrow instead of next year, well, yeah, that, that's, that's going to create some issues because, again, uh, eight, nine years I've been here, we need to compromise. It's, it's, at the end of the day, it's all about relationships. I don't care what anyone says, and uh, that will definitely poison the water. So I'm not sure who's, who it's going to be addressed to or who he's going to attack, who are they going to follow. Uh, it's something new, but, but again, it's not new because, we, we, again, we campaign every two years, and a lot of these things that he's talked about we've seen, it's just kind of sad that it seems like it's going to start a lot almost a year earlier. Have you been uh, in, as part of the negotiations on the budget, did you sit in on those with the governor? I sat in with the, uh, his director, Tim Newton, uh, Donna Ardwin has been part of those meetings, and we've had the Senate and the House Republicans and Democrats, and we've met for a little bit over three weeks. We've had a series of like anywhere from eight to ten meetings. There were never, never, it was very clear from the beginning, negotiations. We were just talking about the governor's plan and they tried or they explained to us how they arrived to those conclusions. Uh, but again, I will tell you that just looking at my colleagues on the Republican side at those meetings, uh, they were scratching their heads too when they heard about some of these cuts and what they wanted to do. So uh, hopefully what they took from that was that it's not only the Democrats but on the Republican side, there's some concerns about what they want to do with the budget. We won't keep you much longer. Let me just say, uh, one of the reasons that we have the shortfall, in fact, I would just remind people, if, if we had not had the income tax decline in January, whether you're for that or against that, I'm just pointing out the math, uh, we'd almost have a balanced budget, I, I think, if that income had been included or been available uh, as part of this spring and put in together the 2016 budget. To what extent would you say we have as a state a spending problem and to what extent would you say we have a revenue problem? Well, everything's relative, right? I mean, if, if you look at number one, the tax increase that did pass three years ago, which I voted against, uh, I think we could have done a better job, and by we I mean the legislature, to control spending during those two or three years. Um, I'm not sure if, 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 that, if that happened, and, and I don't think there was really an attempt to just cut back a little bit. If you compare us to, let's say, Wisconsin, Indiana, we've had a lot of uh, conversations about the income tax. Well, our income tax compared to Indiana at 3%, 3.5, it's, it's very competitive. It's lower than theirs as well, and Wisconsin. So we need to take a, a, a good look at our tax structure, and as part of a short-term and long-term plan, uh, but it is what it is. At this sunset, I don't think there's an appetite right now for many Republicans, including Democrats, to go back to an income tax increase. But I think we need to talk about revenue streams and revenue sources. And again, it could take any shape or form, but it has to be part of this conversation on the budget. It has to be balanced, and maybe we can cut some more. But obviously, we've identified the needs of the state, both on the Democratic side, on the Republican side, and it's very obvious that the needs uh, exceed the current revenue that we have. Okay, and if I, 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 hopefully I don't wear out my welcome, but I just want to pursue one small then line of questioning. Is 
I would have thought that uh, the governor said he wasn't going to sign an, a, a budget that was out of balance. I would have thought that, but he said he wasn't going to have a special session, so I was kind of expecting that the governor and the legislative leaders would be working behind the scenes, and then when they had some kind of a deal, they would call the lawmakers back. Should you be coming back as early as Thursday on June the 4th? Is anything going to be accomplished in the next four days? I think, number one, just for the record, we're not getting paid for the days we're coming back. So it's not a special session. The speaker has decided that we still have work to do. Uh, I think we're going to keep coming back as often as we have to. Uh, hopefully the uh, governor will understand that we're going to be here on Thursday and between now and, and Wednesday night or Thursday, hopefully there's still, still some dialogue and at least a framework that we can operate under and hopefully just put some votes on the table. But we're going to keep coming back. We're not going to get paid because the job is not done. Uh, and we need to, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, uh, you know, meeting with you, it's all about the budget. And we have other issues long term. We can talk about his turnaround agenda, but I agree with the speaker on this one. It should not be a conversation that we tie into the budget. It's, it's, a, uh, it's very time sensitive. And we, short term, we need to address this. We have 30 days left before, as we heard before, you know, Rome burns. So it's uh, something we need to do quickly. And let's continue having conversations about his turnaround agenda. All right, thank you.